Hi everyone, Tara Manisig here, TZ Manix on Twitter, a developer advocate for progress working on the Kenda UI team. And you've joined me here today in a series that we're creating to help you build a robust React application with the Kenda UI library that was built specifically for React. This is actually video three. In the first video, we talked about Kenda UI. Second video, we installed everything we needed uh, for this application and created a React application with Create React App. But worry not, all the videos are listed below in the comments as well as the repo for building this project is broken down into commits with all the code changes to help you along the way. So we are going to jump in today to actually bring those components into our React project. I want to show you a little bit about the components that we're going to be using today. First of all, we're going to be making a place where users can add a healthy goal and check how many iterations they want to do of that healthy habit. I guess I should say a healthy habit that you can add because we're creatures of habits, right? And then we will be creating a grid that contains um, information, nutritional information about fruits and vegetables. So let's look at the components we're going to be using today. We will be just for this video, bringing the components into the project. We'll be customizing them in the next video, but for now we're just bringing them into the project. And I do want to show you that there's tons of documentation about these components uh, and APIs that are very useful as well. And you find them here at telerc.com kendo react UI components, and you'll find all the list here. So today we're doing drop downs. We're going to be using the numeric text box, and we will also be using buttons, because who doesn't love a good button? <laughs> and we will be starting out with the grid. And you will see what we can do with the grid in the customization video. Again, today we're just bringing it in. But there's a ton of stuff that you can actually be doing with the grid that could be its own series in itself. So today we are touching on this. Let's jump into the code. I want to show you real quick that I do still have the React app running. Again, we used Create React app to create the React app. <laughs> and I ran npm start in the background so that we could keep it going so it could update as we write our code. Today, you will see here that we are in the root directory. We're going to change into source and we will just be building everything up in the app.js file today. That is not a good standard, but it keeps everything very clear for us to run through these things today. But as you progress with these projects, it's highly recommended that you break everything into correct components and where they need to be for today. Let's keep it simple, right? So inside of our app.js folder, we're going to start by importing all of the components that we need. While we're in here, let's actually delete the things we don't need. So we don't need the logo and we don't need anything inside of this div. So we will D14 shift G. And we also do not need this logo. So we will delete this. I am using Vim, and so what I am doing in this file side right here is nerd tree. It's very fun. I highly recommend it. I like it a lot. <laughs> okay. All right, back to business. We will first import the buttons. So, and I did that first because it was alphabetically in my head. <laughs> but we could also, now that I'm thinking about it, let's actually put them in the order that we're going to use them. And that is from drop downs. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Next, we will be using numeric text box from inputs. And finally, we will be using the grid, but also from grid, we will be using the grid 
column. But instead of having to write grid column every single time, we're just going to import it grid column as column to make it simpler. <clears throat> and I'm a little off the screen. I'll just change that grid and we can plus it up again. Nope, we cannot. <laughs> We're grabbing that from grid. So now we have all of our components imported. We also, remember, installed a theme last video so that all of our components look the same and look very nice across our whole project. So we'll go ahead and bring that in right here. Import at. And we have to go in and grab the CSS file from the distributables, distributables folder or the dist folder. I don't know why I try to say that whole thing every time. All that CSS. One other thing that we need today is information, data for our grid to make it look super nice and filled with smart things. And my favorite kind of application to make is one that I need, one that I can use. So I decided to grab some nutritional information about fruits and vegetables to put inside of our grid. <laughs> I went ahead and put the JSON file inside of our source directory. Let me show you what that looks like. So nutrition.json and I'll go ahead and open it up below. You can see that it is just a bum bunch of information uh, including weight and measure, carbs and proteins and sugars about fruits and vegetables. We won't be using every field in this but I'll show you in the next video how we customize those things. For now, we're just going to be adding our grid and throwing that data inside of there with no customizations. So we'll close that out. And add our nutrition. Boop. Now that we have all the components imported to use in our application, I want to put our information for our grid inside of state. So we will go into the code. We will build a constructor. We'll go ahead and pass props and then super props in case we need it later. Then we're going to declare this dot state and put our data as nutrition. Easy peasy. Since we're inside of state, we need to pass information to our drop down list so it knows what to contain inside of our drop down list for the users to choose from. We could also make this dynamic, so that's why I'm going to put it in state now in case later on we decide to make what goes inside of the drop down list dynamic. Oops, I forgot a space. Now that we have that data inside of state that we need, we'll go ahead and go inside of our render function and actually add the components inside here. So if we go down here, let's make a nice little header first. It looks like I'm escaping a bunch and it's because I have been on a Microsoft Surface Pro for the past three months and just switched back over to my MacBook Pro for this video and there's like micro space difference on how long the caps lock key is which is what I mapped to escape so you will see me mistakenly escaping at times that's why <laughs> in case you wondered <laughs> so we have a nice header there and inside there we will make a div class name healthy habits because this is where the list of the habits that the user enters will be added but for now 
we are going to leave that empty because we're just adding our components right now. So in this div named add habits is where we're adding the place that users can add their habits that they want to do. So we add our drop down list by just making a component that's drop down list. And inside there, we are going to feed it its data, yum yum data, this.state.habits options, which is what we named it. Yes, we did. <laughs> and then we, it is a self closing component. So we can just put that here on the same line. You can drop it down too if you like, whatever your preference is. After that, Inside of here, we then need to see how many times they want to iterate that healthy habit. And that is where numeric text box comes in. That's all you really need to add the component is open it up with the component name, angle bracket component name, and then self-closing tag to have the bare minimum of what you need. That's all you add. After that, we will add a button down here for them to say, yes, please add that healthy habit. Close that out. We can close out the add habits section and start our new div class name, nutrition grid. So then here we'll put it, be putting our grid. Now, the grid component is pretty straightforward. First thing you do is open up your grid component and then attach your data by setting data to this dot state dot data. Because remember up inside of our state, we declared that data equaled our nutrition JSON file. Now, to put that data in there how we want, we will be using the column that we imported, that grid column that we brought in as column to make things simpler. We will be calling on those. First, we have to close out this open tag of the grid. Come on, Tara. Close out that component. And here is where we're going to be adding the columns to our grid. And we can decide what from our data goes into each of these columns here. So we open up the column and we give it a field that is equal to exactly what it's listed at in our JSON file. So in our JSON file, we have description listed as one of the headers, but we are going to use title to actually call that food. Much more straightforward. And then we have four more and these do get a little more complicated, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part of the video to not bore you. <laughs> You're welcome. Whew, okay. That was a lot of weird typing. <laughs> so if we go down, we need to go ahead now and finally close out our grid. and close out this div in general. And it looks like our formatting is a little off. Looks good. So now that we have NPM start still running, we can take a look and see what we have. If we go back over to localhost, we can see that <clears throat> we have a drop down list with all of our lovely things inside of here. And look, it's already pretty, <laughs> looks good, because we have that default styling already in place. And we have a numeric text box that right now you can pretty much put anything inside of, including negative numbers. So um, we will be changing that up in the next video. <clears throat> and we have a grid that keeps going on forever. But again, it's already styled, which is nice. So we have our application. In the next video, we will be customizing it to make it work and act 
more how what we need it to do. We're gonna wrap this one up here, but if you have any questions, remember that you can reach out to us on Twitter at KendaUI and me personally at TZManix. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for coding with me. Hope to see you there.